Well, it's official. We made it to the winter season in Alaska. Eric and I are going to be staying at this cute little cabin behind us for the next two nights. It is a public use cabin. They're super neat. We enjoy staying at them. And if you don't know much about them, they are managed and maintained by the state. A lot of them you have to reserve ahead of time, but there are actually some that are first come first serve. They are all unique, but they are all primitive. So you've got to be prepared for that. And some of them you can just roll up with your truck. Others you've got to get into by trail or boat. And there are even some that are fly in only. We made it a priority to make several reservations uh, this winter season because we're not going to be able to get out to our cabin. So we wanted to make sure that we got outdoors and brought the dogs and had some fun. This particular cabin is gorgeous. It's a little bit misty today, but we're in a spruce forest. We're overlooking a lake and the Alaska range is in the backdrop right there. Hopefully we'll get to see that tomorrow. So the cabins are all throughout. They have them all the way down in the Southeast, also in South Central and here in the interior, which is where we're at today. Let's take a little look around to the outside. You may have only seen we come out to these cabins in the winter, but they are usually open year round. So it's got like a little summer setup area. You've got a picnics and a little campfire ring and you can bring boats, canoes, things like that and go out fishing, which is what we plan to do. This is the snow machine parking. So at most of them, you do have to bring your own wood, but at this particular cabin, the land that we're on, you are allowed to harvest some of the dead trees, but we have enough wood, so we won't have to do that. Let's follow this trail to the outhouse. This is the outhouse. It's actually a really, really, really nice one. Wow. It's got everything you need. And this is the cabin. It's a 12 by 16, so nice and cozy. A lot of them are built out of logs, as you can tell. I think this one's a little older, but sometimes some of them are built out of modern materials. Let's head on inside the cabin. We've got a nice day today. It was negative 20 Fahrenheit when we left our house. We got out here, it warmed up to five degrees. So we've got the ice chest outside keeping cool. Let's head in the cabin. This one's a little funky on the, there we go. I thought it'd be kind of cool to bring the, our thermometer on this trip, and this one does the outside and the inside. We have got this cabin heated up to just under 55 degrees. It feels pretty nice in here, and it's cooled down a little bit outside. It's 1.2 degrees Fahrenheit, and I guess an important part of these cabins when we come to them is the wood stove. So this one is, it's a pretty cool one. Some of the ones we've stayed at, they've got some old, old wood stoves, but they all got their like little corks to them. But this one isn't a brand I've never heard of. It's called a Dutch West. It's your typical wood stove. It's semi-efficient, but the thing I've noticed about this one is it has no lip on the front. So you gotta be really careful when you open it up like this. See how long, everything just wants to kind of fall out the front. It does boil water extremely fast. I boiled us water. I made our cup of coffee and I even made us a little bit of soup that we're gonna eat because we're kind of hungry. We've got somewhere to eat right here, which is like a indoor picnic table. We bring in our own water. Um, we bring 12 gallons. So we have a seven gallon and a five gallon. That always seems to be enough for us, the dogs doing dishes, things like that. This one's pretty cool because it has bunk beds and we always usually sleep up top. It's a little warmer up there. It gets us away from the dogs. And speaking of the dogs, if you keep these little buggers happy, they seem to do pretty good on these trips. They're getting older, they're both 14, so we bring their thick uh, Tempur-Pedic dog beds and they pretty much just sleep the whole trip and they have a pleasant time out here. We've got all our food. You have to bring your own light because it's dark here, it's winter. It's like noon right now and it's pretty dark out here. So we bring this one, which has a little uh, lantern thing on there and unfortunately, my vintage Coleman lantern, the white gas one, the little socks, that go on the lantern in there. I just put new ones on last time we went out to one of these cabins. And when we got out here, they like fell off and they disintegrated. So we can't use our lantern this trip. These cabins are pretty basic. Uh, you're, you know, you're not supposed to leave anything here for the next people. Some people do, some of it's useful. Some of it's just garbage and we ended up hauling it away. We try to leave them a little bit cleaner, but pretty excited to be here. We're gonna eat our soup and we're gonna do some rainbow trout fishing, which I'm pretty excited for. We haven't fished for rainbow trout in quite a while. So we'll uh, fire up the snow machines and we'll head down to the lake and check it out. I know you're not excited for rainbows. They're not big enough for you. I'm 
spot. Check out where that spot is. Looks like someone's in fishing. You see straight out that second spot. Say drill a hole, right? Wouldn't hurt to start with one right here. When we're fishing for rainbow trout, it's pretty fun because we get to use all sorts of little tiny flashy jigs. I've got an example of a few of our favorites that we like to use. Some of these have like a little rubber worm on them. Some of them you just fish as is. And then I'm gonna pick one of those. We're setting Ariel's pull up right now. She's got this little tiny jig on there, just a little single hook. And we're gonna put a piece of this shrimp that we got. That, this is like a neon, radiation green shrimp you want to nuclear waste nuclear waste shrimp yeah let's put a just a piece on there because this is some big shrimp you're ready to fish thank you i'm gonna use this pole i believe oh dang that's already got a little that's already got a little rainbow jig on it so that's what i'm going with and for some reason i always like to start with no bait so i'm going with no bait and i'm probably 100 feet that way Every lake's different. This one, we can use bait, we can use treble hooks, and the limit's pretty high. So we're going for rainbow trout, and I believe there's also landlocked coho salmon in here. I like this one. Oh. Good thing I wasn't a fish. Good thing I pulled on line and tested it, huh? Okay, good luck. I'll see you in a little. Okay, we got a crappie, and we're ready to fish. Hey, Eric, how thick was the ice here? Thick. Over a foot? Yeah, I'd say closer to two feet, like 18 inches. I didn't even pay attention when you were doing that. Okay, we're just a few feet down. We're gonna see if that works. Usually, I like to look up, I think they're called a bathymetric map. So it's like a topographical map of the terrain underneath the water for each lake that we're going to go to but I forgot to for this lake so we're just kind of using our judgment in general when you're fishing for both of these fish we usually catch them at shallow depth so like 15 feet and under hopefully we catch one I know Eric wants one for dinner hey Eric yeah I already got a nibbler what a nibbler like a little baby like a hatchling Dang it. That's just little I'm babies good. they're just little babies it's not big enough to take my lure even. Yeah, it's pulling it. It's just real tiny though. Five minutes in, something bit. Pretty pretty nice sized fish, I think. It's this whole pull when I was talking to Eric like bent. Yeah, I wonder. Nice to rainbow, young, baby. Young like that. Look at him. Yeah. Okay, um, he unfortunately thank goodness this is a single hook. Yeah. Um yeah. shoot, how do we get that out? Pull it down. Let's see. Is it small, hun? It's about the size of a hooligan, huh? I'm using the pink shrimp and that's what's working. This is a landlocked salmon called a coho salmon. Let's get that one back. Get a little bit bigger. I want something like 12 inches. I love shrimp. Okay, thanks baby. This is relaxed fishing. But that one that bent it. I know the one it. that bent would be a, a bigger that fish. That was the one. All right, thanks baby. Okay, good luck. Do you need that skimmer or anything to get your hole a little better? Yeah. I just kick it with my boot. <laughs> I caught another one! They like the... Uh, oh gosh, come on guy. Nice setup. No, but watch this. I all I did was... Oh, I got one on here. Oh, I got a good, I got a good one. Nice. There he goes. Oh, that's a good one. He's pulling the drag. That's a fighter. Oh yeah, that's a keeper, that's a keeper. That's dinner. That's my size right there. That's a rainbow. Well, thanks to Ariel telling me how it was done, her piece of green shrimp put on here like a little tail. And I set it in the hole, and I don't think I was really jigging. Just bit it. And I'd say that thing's about 12 inches, and this is gonna be perfect for just like a 
almost like a whole pan fried trout. We need one more fish for dinner, but look at that thing. What a beauty, look how he dark. Fought. Look how dark it is. He fought hard, huh? Look how dark that is. Yeah, it did fight. It did yeah, fight I thought, I for sure thought you had like cool. a massive fish. He was really fighting. That's a dinner. Oh, I got a bite over here. He's a little one, he's sharp. He's biting real sharp. Shoot, I got another big one over here. Dang it. Oh man. I had one, I got it to the hole and it got off. Yeah, I got another little one. Dang it! Pretty sure the same guy just bit it. Action packed day of fishing. I am pretty sure between both of us we've caught probably over 10 fish and we've got one keeper. And the good thing is we're not making the fish dinner until tomorrow night. So we've got food for tonight. So we're gonna head up to the cabin pretty soon. It's getting dark, but I mean, it's still early. It's like probably not even three in the evening. And I'll let my fish freeze and we'll call it quits for tonight. We'll come back out again tomorrow and see if we can catch a partner for that fish. We're about to make dinner. Something Eric and I like to do when we come to these cabins is read through the journal logs. There are these books that people can document. Document? They can write like a little, they can write about how their trip was, their stay. So it's really fun. We found one from over, uh, it was about 10 years ago. So I'm excited to look through that one. And for dinner, doesn't seem like much of a dinner, but we've got some sourdough bread and we're gonna heat up this brie on the wood stove since it cooks so hot. I wanted to do like a whipped, brie with honey, but we don't have a way to whip it out here. So we're just going to heat up this brie and melt it with honey and some chili pepper flakes. She looks good. She oh. smells like sourdough. <laughs> Look at that. They brought a canoe. They hiked a canoe in, huh? They 2013. You know what we were doing in 2013? We were living in California. We weren't even, we didn't even move to Oregon. We moved to Oregon in 2014. I was in school and you were working. Back to the lake. Okay, I'm gonna put this on the wood stove. Thank you, honey. Should I put a little water in there or no? Just cheese. Yeah, and depending on how quick it bubbles, I would add this then and let that. Whiskey. Everyone drinks whiskey out of these cabins. I saw one. He was like, I showed up here. It was pouring rain and I'm by myself. I have other people that might come, but I don't think they're coming. Breaking into the whiskey. So, so I'm drinking wild turkey whiskey and eating dinner. The other one we read, I read that more than a handful of times. This one mentions drinking it in the morning. This person's from Minnesota. Oh, this would be cool. I tell you, there's a lot of grouse right here. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if we saw one. Maybe we should break that trail around tomorrow. For fun? See if we see a grouse. Maybe in the morning. We got... Okay, this is where these people are from. This is the Smith clan. Warrington, Oregon. Astoria, Oregon, Nelson, New Zealand, Lapine, Oregon, Ben, Oregon, Helena, Montana, and Delta Junction, AK. Do you want to put it back on the stove for a little bit? Yeah, let's put it on the stove for like... Oh yeah, this knife will do. Oh, I can't spill on the book. You want this one or you want to make your own? I'm just like really excited for this, hun. But it's really hot, so watch yourself. I guess I'll make my own. <gasps> Are you kidding me? Oh. I just got so... I didn't realize we were eating right now. That's so good. Oh. You know what? You know what? Well, that's amazing. It's spicy, cheesy, and bare... I don't even really detect the sweetness. You know what it's not? Salt. Do you want any salt in there? Isn't that hot? It's not like oh, it's hot sauce spicy, but it's like aftertaste spicy. Yeah, it's burning me up. 
for a meal. That is so good. What a good meal. It's almost like fondue, pretty much, huh? Okay. Breakfast time. We got a good one planned. Full, what do they call it? Full course breakfast. Some good looking eggs for breakfast. Check out those. The chickens are laying good back at home and it cleared up last night. I think it got a little colder. It got down to negative 13 and I can see some stars out there. It's probably about eight o'clock in the morning now and last night went pretty good. Got really hot in here at one point. I had to open the door for about 15 minutes, cool it down, and then it got really cold in here. We decided to get up at that point. For some reason, Bo was kicking the wall all night, so he was trying to keep everyone up, but we're up now, and we're gonna make a good breakfast. So it was supposed to be actually moose tacos this morning, but I completely forgot to make us tortillas. We realized that last night. Uh, we were gonna go to bed pretty early. It was like seven o'clock. It's always kind of hard to find something to do when you're out here. And we didn't bring too much to entertain ourselves. So we took a cruise around the lake on our snow machines. And what time did we go to bed? Nine? 10? 9.30 for you. 9.30. But I did tell Eric last night cause I was kind of feeling a little tired around seven to make me a cup of joe. And we tried this new coffee, fairly good. I don't know how it's pronounced. That's the name of it. Yakano? Is that what it's called? Kono? Yakono? Yakono? Yakono. I don't know. I don't know how it's pronounced. And it's Italian? No, that's Puerto Rican. It is a Puerto Rican coffee. My yes. apologies. So this is a Puerto Rican coffee. We have tried it yesterday. We've tried it. This is what we have right here today. We thought it'd be fun to bring a different type of coffee every cabin that we go to since we're such coffee uh, enthusiasts. So we like to drink a lot. Last trip, we brought... Lavazza, which is an Italian coffee, and I gave it a four out of a five, and we have had more time to drink these coffees. So upon like further review, because we've had more time with it, I feel like I'm gonna give that other coffee like a 3.8. What would you give it? It was a good coffee. It was a good everyday coffee that was just basic and pretty good, but not like the best we've ever had. So our gold standard coffee is actually Cafe Bustello. We tried it a few years back and it's, I don't know why, I feel like it's just a perfect five out of five. It's not even mild, it is mild. It doesn't have any extra flavors that sometimes coffees have, but it's really just like a good, strong cup of coffee, right? What would you say? I agree, it's just a good all around coffee. It's like perfect for camping. It already comes ground and it's just a good coffee. <laughs> so we're trying this one again and or we're trying this one now i made it yesterday and i was like blown away that's like extremely good coffee i looked this one up online and i wanted to try a puerto rican coffee because puerto rico is like big into coffee and i was like you know what would be a good one from there and this one came up and a lot of people were saying this is like their folgers over there kind of like their go-to just coffee that everyone drinks over there i don't know if that's correct but it is absolutely delicious it's like i mean i would we really like Cafe Bustelo. I would drink this all the time too. This is extremely good coffee. Four to five, it's up there. It's like, if you don't get no better, it's just really five. good coffee. I will say, we're not huge on coffees that have like a... After flavor. Not after flavor, but like coffees that have taste. Like if you get like a caramel coffee or like a cinnamon coffee, something like that. This one, we both agree, it kind of has like a chocolate, chocolate flavor almost at the end, but it's, it's so good. Yeah, I tossed back and forth on this one. I feel like it's definitely a over a four, close to like a four and a half. It's probably hands down like one of the top five coffees we've ever tasted. Oh yeah, for sure. If I went to a coffee shop and they served me this, I'd be very excited about it. It's very strong. We like really strong coffee because we, we use a French press. Um, and so we, we brew it time. for a long time. So it ends up very strong. We're just doing scrambled eggs, sourdough toast with some jelly. That's it, yeah, and moose, moose, patties. Uh, moose patties, sausages. I gotta get the dandelion jelly out. Okay, well, good thing someone left plates, because... What did you bring first, nothing? I forgot everything. I know, we kind of messed up. I was gonna time. bring bowls and plates, those blue ones, and I completely forgot, so... This is a silver red egg, this is a Hedemora, and this is an Icelandic pullet. Eggs, the baby eggs. Pink over there. Yeah, I can't see those at all. Those are huge. What a beautiful place to be. Put that 
creases. Sure. Is this one mine? Got some dandelion jelly. This is awesome. Barely tastes like the green apples that we used in there too. It mainly tastes like dandelion, which tastes like honey. It's a really nice jelly. Yeah, I like that one. Mm. You gonna make a second cup for the day? Maybe a little later? Might not need to right now. Made out here to the other side of the lake. The cabin's right there. We got the mountains in the background. I believe that's a beaver lodge. And we're gonna try to fish on this side of the lake because there's this kind of point and we're hoping that there's like some structure under the water and that's where the bigger fish are hanging out. So we're trying for one more fish. See if we can get a big one. <laughs> nice hole. Oh yeah, it's way deeper than that. It's huh? right there. <laughs> so 18. from there to there. And then I'd say it's close to eight, 18 inches. He's got plenty of bites No, they don't like that. I would like to check your depth Look. out. I told you they like that. Like it. It's really bobbing it, huh? <laughs> we got a baby. That took less than a minute. You got one. What is it? It's a little bigger. Oh, oh it's way bigger. A... Oh, no. I got a good one. Nice. Oh, yeah. oh, nice. Got him. That's a dinner. I think we're going to keep fishing, though, a little longer because that was pretty quick. That's what we were looking for to eat right there. Don't I go back in the hole. I haven't even fished my hole yet. Oh, hey? yeah, huh? Oh yeah, I got a nice one. Oh, that's fat, huh? That's the biggest you've caught. That's the biggest one. Biggest one yet. <laughs> Probably about a four, maybe about a 14 incher. It's a nice one. This uh, lure seems to be working really well today. This is what both of us have on. Eric's is pink and purple, I believe. It's a jig head with a worm on the back and they do bite just this, but Eric found the bigger the shrimp you put, so if you put like a really big chunk bigger than this actually, um, the fish, the bigger fish, seem to be enticed by that. Seems like we're getting a lot bigger fish over in this area of the lake, which is pretty cool. And hopefully something will bite. Usually they hit right away, but sometimes you have to leave it in there for a little bit. I already felt one, actually. I want to catch a fish, too. What was it? What is that? What is that? Hey, that's a nice rainbow! <laughs> what, what are you doing to catch all those big fish, hon? There you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice that's such rainbow. a spider. Nice! He's big! He was at the bottom. Nice fish. So that's using, that's using this. Awesome day out here. So I think we've got uh, eight over there and then one back at the cabin. So we've got nine, actually eight rainbow trout, one small coho. Those are going to be for us. It's going to be for the cat because Eric likes to feed the cat these trout. She really likes them. And then we'll probably give one or two to the chickens.
should probably put it. He's a shaker. Oh, shit. Oh, that's a nice one. Okay, we are calling it quits. Let's pack up, head back to the cabin for a couple minutes, and I think we're gonna head on a little ride. Ten pounds lighter. A really cool piece of equipment to carry with the snow machine is a hammer like this. And this is like a very lightweight plastic type hammer, but it's not like a regular plastic that'll break. You can really beat on stuff. And it's really cool. You can hit the ice off your auger and it works really good for where you put your feet on your snow machine. If it gets clogged up with snow and ice, you can just whack it with a hammer. Okay. Well, I'm pretty excited. We got to keep 10 fish. Thanks to Eric catching all those for us. We didn't get to get out the, as much as we have in the past this summer to do some extra fishing. So usually we have quite a bit in the winter for the dogs and the cat and the chickens. And actually the cat has just recently been into fish. Um, our other cat hunter loved fish like this, but she she's a little finicky, but lately she has been liking fish. So they're gonna enjoy the extras that we have. We're gonna make dinner when we get back, but we are going to finish off the trail that we started last night. Not that big of a deal. I just uh, that camera swings around. No, all that happened was my hand got stuck on the throttle a little. Oh look, I snapped it off. Oh dang it! What do you do? I it the it hit those trees. You know, like that happened to you the other day. I think you broke one of the mounts. Yeah, I figured I was gonna break it. I broke. I figured I was breaking something. That windshield's so big, it takes all of, you know. Me should be in now. I mean, hope it doesn't fall off going down the road. So I broke the mouth? Uh, he just broke a couple of them, but honestly, they could have already been broken. Who knows? We switched over to snowshoes. We're trying to make it to the river behind us. We can see it. Eric tried to get out here with the snow machine, but the trail, I think, is overgrown or we can't find it. Earlier, when I fell off the snow machine, this is a really nice trail. Someone's definitely put a lot of energy into it, but it's windy, it's tight. You really got to maneuver the machines. And I was being stupid. I had the camera dangling around my neck and that didn't end well. So <laughs> we've got these on and we're headed out there. We want to see what it looks like. Let's go. That was the part I broke. Oh, oh there it is. Head back to the cabin. Not too far of a ride. 100 miles. Should we back up where it's dark? Oh yeah, for sure. What's squeaking? Because they don't get used very often, I guess. That was good. I picked you another good one. Look at this. How cool of a post would this make? This big burl here. Did you see his friend? And then this one has the burls up high. I've never seen so many burls. Oh, he that is? one has like four or five. Six, seven, that one has so many. <gasps> Looks okay. Let's try this one. There's a lot of burls, hon. Hey, you swallowed that one. That one was like rotten or something.
got anything we can pack up tonight, just the ice fishing stuff. Oh man, someone's gonna get a nice wood pile. No nonsense wood, no sticks. Should I just leave the kindling in the same area or put it in a small? That's hot. That is really hot. That's crazy. I'm just gonna hit him with a little bit of everything here first. Oh my gosh. That smells like barbecue sauce. It smells like smoked paprika. All right. These fish are gonna cook fast. Yes, they are. Keep it on the inside. Well, we are definitely eating good tonight. We got two of the rainbow trout cooked up, heads off, tails off, and we gutted them and we cooked them in butter. And we used salt and pepper and a salmon rub that Ariel's mom sent to us. This actually tasted really good. So let's dive in and give this a taste test. Gosh, it looks good. Oh my gosh. That rub is so good. Woo! It is spicy. <laughs> what is in there? You put a lot in it. The smoked paprika. Chilies. Oh, there's chilies. That is good. That's good stuff. He can't survive. It's too cold. He has to live inside the cabin. And he hibernates? Where you go? Pulled all the bones out, the backbones, and we are refrying it. We want it extra crispy. Well, this looks great. I think it turned out really good with a little bit of crisp on it. Ariel and I both agree that when we eat any type of meat or fish, we like some good texture on there. So this is delicious with a little bit of sourdough toast. And we're going to eat all this fish. See you guys in the morning. Do you want this big piece? Yeah, it's, it's, it's like a fish sandwich. I really like it now, hon. Yeah, it's good. It has more of the infused barbecue flavor. I like it. Yeah, you're right. It was a little mushy before. Now it's all crisp. I would put, what could you put on this bread? Like mustard? I think that priest just needs batteries. How hot do you think it was? Yeah, do you have a pan of fruit? We haven't had steel cutouts in a long time. That's the only one I found real quick right off the bat, so. A lot of oatmeal from the kitchen. Whoa. I didn't have them, man. How full is that jar? Three quarters full. This is what, two cups of oatmeal mix? This is enough for three people. <laughs> I know, this is like a lot of oatmeal for me. Well, the dogs can. What are you ready for, hon? I can always grab one of your beds, too. Put the other water jug right there, maybe. Last morning of the trip, and it is like strangely warm out there. So this crazy windstorm came in last night and apparently pushed some warm air in, and I think, yeah, I mean, it, it's gotta be above zero. So it's pretty nice. We're getting things ready outside. It's always easier to pack up, at least to me, when you're leaving these trips because we ate most of our food, we don't have water, and we don't have to bring our firewood back. So we're just getting things ready outside. For Bennett, on the way home? I wouldn't. Yeah, it doesn't seem.
Well, another awesome cabin trip has come to an end, and I think Errol and I can both agree that this will be one that we definitely come back to. The view here was just absolutely amazing. And one of the cool things about these cabins is they are all fairly inexpensive to stay at, and some of them, just like this one, they're actually free. So we didn't have to pay anything to stay here. We just made our reservations. We showed up and had a good time. I think the last thing we have to grab is my little lamp and the dog. Let's hit the trail. Come on, man. He doesn't like his boots. <laughs> Gotta run, man.